and welcome back to object oriented programming this is part 15 and guess what forget pressure cookers we're going to do more parachute stuff because we love parachutes we're going to talk a little bit about model view controller what the heck is that you can click on those two links and you get some more um, information more in-depth information this is a very important design concept. We want to separate the main processes. Again, remember separation of concerns. We want things to do one thing and one thing well, and that's it. And the reason we want this is because it's easy to read, write, and debug when you don't have this great big jumble of crap in one method. So there's three important parts of software first one we call model. Model is the data or information organizational structure. So far we haven't done really anything like this because we haven't stored a data file. But it, this is the way that Amazon, for example, knows what your past purchases are. Some of the data that you create after the software ends or the machine gets turned off needs to persist and we call that concept persistence. View is the way that the program looks and interacts with users. This is a different part of the software. Modern programs for the end user most often use graphical user interfaces. Programs that are in development or those that are requiring super, super speed, let's say that you're trying to decode um, bitcoins or something, they'll use the CLI or the command line interface. Controller is the third part of the software and this is the part of the software that we've been working on. This is the part that does the logic, process the input, and turns data into information. You could argue that all three sections are equally important. However, most languages are specialized to perform only one of those three things. We are going to use SQLite, which is a non-server-based structured query language, or SQL, for data persistence. Okay. Kivi, we're going to use that for the user interface, or the view. And Python, we have been using for the logic and processing. Can one language do it all? Maybe, theoretically, today. A million years ago, when I started doing programming, that was indeed the design paradigm. Um, to this day, still, there are banks, bank systems that run on COBOL. Um, it's amazing to me that COBOL is still alive, but it is. However, ask any old timer about the pleasures of having one language do it all. For example, peek and poke in the old Apple and CPM basics. Let's look at an, at an MVR example. Let's work on the software that we finished for the parachute company. We're going to need to get information from the user, but we're going to stick to the console. We're not doing GUIs yet, and we need to produce data information or a file for the hard disk drive. Can you do model view controller all three things in Python? Well, you could. Um, I'm not sure why you would, but you could. Tkinter comes with Python and you could use it for the view. It's really an interface for an old GUI toolkit called TCLTK. It's really only useful for very simple GUI purposes, and it really hasn't been used since the 90s. So it's easier to learn one multi-purpose tool like Kivi. Pickle comes with Python. You can use that to store stuff to and from storage devices. Again, only useful for very, very simple purposes. So it's easier to learn one multi-purpose modeling package like SQL or SQLite 3. In the Python package index online, and you can click on there, you can find many, 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 many packages that have all kinds of functionality and interfaces to other languages. Okay, but let's go back to parachutes. 
The Parachute customer loved your little piece of software that created the catalog. Of course, now they want some changes. They want you to ask for each of the design parameters because they realize that maybe one of the parameters is going to change. They want you to add the cost of the material to the questions, dollars per square meter of fabric and dollars per kilometer of suspension line. And by the way, that's actually how you buy that stuff. You want to add the production cost to the output and you want to ask for the output file name and path. Now we used objects. We have encapsulation and inheritance and those other things that are available to us. So these changes should be relatively simple. We're going to create or modify a couple of classes, file stuff to do things like reading and writing files, in out stuff to ask things from the user, check the answers, make sure they're fine, unit conversions to convert meters to feet and miles per, uh, meters per second to miles per hour and all that good stuff. So let's start with in and out stuff. Now we want to get input and we want to do some error checking. So if you want an integer or a float, make sure that the answer is in the desired range. If a Boolean, you know, a yes or no is desired, let the user type in any of those things. Y, N, T, F, yes, no, true, false, and let them capitalize it or not capitalize it however he wants. Allow a default answer to be selected by simply pressing enter. So we're going to create a method called ask with default, which is called by the other methods in your, um, in your class that ask for a Boolean or an integer or a float or a string in particular. So ask with default could be something like what I show you on the screen there. And the other methods could be something like what you see here, ask for an integer. Again, these are just examples. The idea is for you to figure this out on your own. And now we have some sample output. Here's what the sample output would be like. You see there how we're asking those questions of the parameters and each parameter has a default. And sure enough, it creates a output using these parameters, which is an output that looks very similar to the output we had before. And it should be, because we're just going to modify a couple things to add production cost. Hopefully this, uh, this helps, and hopefully it's a little bit of a challenge. And enjoy it, and I'll see you again in part 16.